Alrighty, another video. I heard some drama going on, on the internet and only have very general specifics. This person named Illimation, they made a video that was delusional and people shat on it or something from what I gather. And Illimation didn't like that. So I guess she got a bunch of her audience members to try to silence the, the discontent or the dissent to their video. And I guess those people retaliated to that retaliation. And now there's just a bunch of crap going on. So I don't know, in the, the commentary community, I've watched some videos here or there. It's like, it's just, you know, humans being garbage. So let's see what the problem is. Let's see the video that people are talking about. And we're going to see if they're wrong about the things that they say. So let's get to it. Hi, my name is Alyssa. And for as long as I can remember, I have never been satisfied with the way I looked. I hated how my calves were too wide. All right, normal human thing. So far we're starting off okay. It's normal. That's an average person problem. Wide to fit into the boots that all the other girls had no problem wearing. I hated that- All the other girls. Again, not specific to you. You're one person out of billions in the world and everyone has insecurities based on whatever it is. This is an average insecurity that a lot of women have, especially because women tend to be, you know, because of cultural standards. Like, that's a priority for women, the way that they look, the way that they're perceived by other people. They're the vanity aspect, right? So. That squishy part under my chin that stuck out when I smiled on picture day. And I hate, hate, hated shopping for new clothes, even if my current ones no longer fit me. Honestly, especially if my current clothes no longer fit me. I also hate shopping for clothes because it's boring and I don't care. I'd rather have somebody else style me. <laughs> Uh, hey, we're really, hey, we, that's where we relate, huh? Because according to my childhood, that meant I was fat. And based on how I was treated as a kid for being fat, that three letter word brings back so many bad memories. I wasn't aware that being shaped. Normal, people get bullied for all sorts of random shit. I'm brown. You're the blackest white kid I know. You're the whitest black kid I know. You're the blackest black kid I know. Oh. Only thing is I can't change how much melanin I have in my skin. I love this skin color. It's great, it's like a superpower. I can absorb sunlight and just get, get darker. Meanwhile, white people get fucking sunburned. It's fucking hilarious. <laughs> but like, the point is, everyone's gonna roast, roast each other over stupid shit because humans are fucking mindless garbage. What's your point? Let's get to your point. Differently than my peers was a bad thing until I started middle school. I was bullied by a group of girls and one of the daily ways they messed with my head was by comparing my body to different animals, penguins being their favorite, and they would follow me around waddling like penguins to mock me. I made a whole video. <laughs> That's funny. What you can do in that situation is roast them. They have a family member that has substance abuse problems. Oh, just go up to them and be like. <sighs> if someone throws shit at you, throw it right fucking back at them. Because if you don't, they're gonna think that you're just like gonna take it and not gonna do anything to defend yourself. If you're getting bullied at school, learn MMA. Bully slaps you, flip them onto their head, submit them. Like you'll get in trouble for it, right? But is that gonna be worse to deal with, right? The, the, the trouble of beating up a bully versus like just getting bullied and having that affect your conscience? Pick your poison, man. You gotta react to these shitty humans. That's just, we're just disgusting humans, humans. Not men or women over the other, humans. I'm an egalitarian, I don't, again, the label is fuck that, but if you were to try to encapsulate my values into a, a label, I see all humans as fucking worthless animals. I don't see anyone better or worse for any reason. None of, nothing matters. Human life is objectively meaningless and worthless. So, you gotta react accordingly. There's nothing else you can do. Video about bullies and my advice on how to deal with them a while ago, but here's a little excerpt I didn't include back then. Okay, so I had gotten a Halloween costume, but when I opened the package, the costume was broken. So I said that in my Gmail status thingy. Then I got a message from the girl who was bullying me, who I'll just call Minnie. Minnie, the only reason your costume broke is because you're so damn fat. Me, shut up and leave me alone. Minnie. No, you don't respond like that. Come on. Don't be, don't sink to their fucking level. Be petty. These bastards are like garbage. <laughs> the only reason your costume broke is because you're so damn fat. Okay. Tell them at least I have boobs or something. At least like, <laughs> I'm not anorexic. At least like my parents love me. Something like that. Like bully them back. <laughs> Otherwise they're not going to just leave you alone if you tell them to fuck off. That's not how it works. Oh, now you want me to leave you alone when you always harassing me? 
me. You know I ain't any bigger than me. No idea what that means. Oh. When you always harassing me? Did you not leave? Did you not provide the context needed? Are you just trying to frame yourself as a victim? What did you do to this person? All right. I can't, like, comment on that because I don't know. I don't have context to your life. But if that's the reply, what else? What, what did you leave out? Hmm. Minnie, I know, but you way bigger than me. Me. Will you shut up? Seriously. Yeah. Ooh, get her. Minnie, why are you the scared one now? <laughs> well, why are you? Me. That made no sense what you said. Before. None of this makes any sense. This is garbage. Minnie. Yeah, it really did stupid. <laughs> me. If you hate me, then why did you start chatting? That's a good point. Yeah, smart. Minnie. Because now I'm a join to decide you're on when you always cussin' at me. I know I'm smart. That's why I'm a be playing sports. What? <laughs> me. Yeah, you'll make a good bench warmer. Pew, 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 get her, get her. I'm laughing about this now, but this really hurt me back then. The shame of being. What? Do, were you not li listening to what she was saying? Why, what does it mean that you were always cussing at her? What does it mean that you were harassing her? Tell us. Give us context. Is Was this not just a one-way street? What? Where were they coming from? What'd you do? Are you leaving shit out to make yourself feel like you're the victim? Or to make yourself look like you're the victim? I don't like that, dude. I don't like that. Let's just keep going. Being picked on for things you're already self-conscious about feels like lava is being poured all over you. And when you experience harassment like this for days, weeks, months on end with no support, it singes your confidence into ashes. Cause the world makes it crystal clear that they resent your presence. They will be cruel to you for it. And if you don't like how you're being treated, that's your fault. That's your problem to fix. Ugh. Yes, people are going to make you feel this way, but this applies to everyone. Everyone's shitty to each other. You got to know what to do to defend yourself, man. Otherwise, people are going to roll over you. God damn, man. You're acting as if you're the first person this, ever, this shit's ever happened to. And like you're the only person this has ever happened to. What the hell's going on? To fix. So you better change how you look and you better do it fast. Oh, come on. You should be grateful you even have curves. Ugh, that's another thing. Putting aside the suspicious peak in catcalling I experienced as a middle schooler, fat kids can attest to this. Picking out clothes was so stressful. A lot of the stuff we liked either didn't fit us or didn't come in our sizes, so we had to shop in the older women's clothing section to find something that would fit our bodies. So instead of dressing like a cool, trendy tween, we were more business casual. And aside from getting judged by your classmates for how you dressed, you were also getting judged by adults because of dress codes. And we knew those rules came down much harder on us. Sometimes it felt like they only applied to us. While a v-neck top- Yes, you got a point there. Women, young girls, the dress, yeah, it's really stupid, the dress code. It's very much un unfairly applied to women more than, more than dudes. Because women, when it comes to the vanity part, that's more of an important aspect to the way that women are perceived. You know, schools are stupid. Those are, those are especially in America, it's garbage. They're kind of just there to facilitate the harassment and bullying. Like, it's not there to educate people. It's not there to make people better. It's just to move them along so that they meet a certain basic set of criteria that, you know, the, the state, the government, the people around them can just be, okay, I guess he's good. Let's move him along. It's not about, like, actually improving people or teaching them valuable, you know, traits, such as, I don't know, finance learning how to learn, you know, setting up, if planning for the future, self-improvement, working out, all the stuff that actually comes handy in life. They're just, you know, here, here's four years of math. There you go. That'll help you. It's a joke. So yeah, you got a point there, but you're not the only one. You're not the only one. Everyone has to deal with the shit. All the people you're surrounded by, it's just because it didn't apply to you, it's not as apparent to you. It's just the stuff that's apparent to you is the stuff that's happening to you. The top on a skinny girl would be praised for being fashionable. The same V-neck top on me would lead to the school shirt of shame with the side of, next time, leave something for the imagination. And so... Top on a skinny girl would be seen as fashionable? Okay, what about the anorexic shit? Just flip the other side of the, uh, the coin. Like, 
What about the body dysmorphia or body images that, that comes along with women who want to be skinnier or perceived as skinnier or the, the roasts that come along with that? Oh, you're a fucking twig. What are you, anorexic? Gross. You look like a, a gust of wind could like knock you over. With the bulimia? There's, bo there's, there's two fucking <laughs> ranges. There's a whole range of shit that you got to deal with whatever category you fall under. Okay. So far, what I'm getting from you, Illy, Illymation, a lot of victimization. Like, you're really, you're really, like, hounding on the, uh, how you've been treated. So, the only clothes you're left with and conditioned to choose so you don't get in trouble or have to endure unwanted attention from creepy older men are things that hide your body and amplify the shame of even rolling up your sleeves. And listen, I love a good comfy cozy sweater, but not in the North Carolina 90% humidity summer heat. I deserve to wear a tank top just like anyone else. So what did I do as a young girl who wasn't confident in her body? I started dieting. At the age of 11, I looked over at whatever weight watching, Jennifer Craig, fitnessing pal, MLM, Facebook scam my parents were up to, and I copied them. Now, was this- It's also another thing. Remember, it's also harder to lose weight in America. It's corruption, garbage food, garbage culture. Every, like, it's normalized. Um, it's really different. Dude, I was a fucking fat boy. Look at that. <laughs> Pudge to the extreme. My whole family is obese. Like, that's something I had to deal with. There was a lot of... Now, granted, I wasn't as faced as, as more so apparently with the body image stuff. It was more so people would treat me like garbage. I mean, for a billion different reasons. But I just didn't have any self-awareness. I was just like, okay, I guess I'm just this. I, had, I didn't know its ramifications because I didn't have the self-awareness to acknowledge it. To feel anxious about it. I was just a dumb fuck. I was a dumb child, dude. Hopped up on fucking Adderall <laughs> and Concerta, right? Amphetamines and shit, because I had to get good grades. That's the most boring part, right? Meeting these checks on a piece of paper is the most boring part than, than over uh, you just doing well in life. Was this diet recommended by my doctor? Did I check in with a certified dietitian on a monthly basis? Did I consult with any healthcare professional for this restrictive, shame-based dieting I put myself through to lose enough weight in hopes the bullying would stop? Nope. Which, unfortunately, is really common for school kids. According to the National Library of Medicine, about one half of teenage girls and one fourth of teenage boys have tried dieting to change the shape of their body. And of those girls, more than one out of three were actually at a healthy weight to begin with. And these numbers are wild to me. Teenagers should be focused on getting good grades, hanging out with their friends, and seeing the Timothy Chalamet Willy Wonka movie. Not counting calories. Don't watch that movie. It's a garbage movie. Get the hell out of here. Why are kids so body conscious? Why are they getting bullied? Who is teaching them this? Well, we all are, whether we realize it or not. It's called diet culture. According to self.com, diet culture is an entire belief system that associates food with morality and thinness with goodness. And it's rooted in the very colonial belief that every individual has full control and responsibility over their health. No, 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 that is woke propaganda. Everyone knows being fat is unhealthy and anyone can lose weight by focusing on diet and exercise. Calories in, calories out, it is not that hard. Okay, well, I'm glad that works for your body, but here's how that went for me. Oh God, here we go. Calories in, because yes, that's the basic tenet to losing weight. If you, t if you consume less calories than you're burning, you're gonna lose weight. The the, the there's something that you said. Oh, and how that works for somebody else's, but no, it works universally. It, like humans, we all have the same <laughs> biology. We all work the same way. You just got to find a diet that, that works successfully for you. And of course, it isn't just a slap it on, you're good. You ha it's a lifestyle change. It's something that you, you got to like stick to. You have to incorporate into your, into your life. It's like working out. I see it as maintenance, right? Like brushing your teeth or showering is just something that you have to like, like manifest in your life. All right, let's get to the points where, like, actual points I can argue. At the end of 2022, I was nominated for a Streamy Award in the animation category. So I got to walk the Streamy's red carpet and attend the awards ceremony, which was a blast. But when all the photos came out, I felt that oh-so-familiar lava flow of shame consume me. I hated how wide my legs were when I posed. I hated that squishy part under my chin that stuck out when I smiled. 
And I felt awful knowing that I had to order that dress online because they didn't have my size in store. But most of all... Bruh, they don't have my size of shoe in store. I'm, I'm 5'11". Although people don't believe me when I say that. They're just, no, you're, oh, you're six foot, six one. It's like, no, it's the shoes and the hair, the afro. It makes it seem bigger. I'm a size 13, 13 and a half. That's the shoe that fits me for whatever fucking reason. It makes no sense for my height. I can't find that in stores. I got to ask, hey, do you have it in the back? No, order something online. This applies universally. It's like my arms. My arms are ridiculously long for my height. It makes no sense. But that's just the way that it is, so you, I just deal with it, right? You have to try to, like, accept these types of things. Now, granted, with your body, you can change that. I can't change my the size of my shoe. I can't change the, the length of my arms. Like, you have some degree of control over this. You just didn't find something that worked, and you didn't stick to it. Things can work. You just have to try harder in the right ways. Remember, trying hard, that doesn't mean shit. You have to think about how you're going to try, and then you have to try, and then you have to test, refine, like reshape, find an avenue, go down it, try a bunch, doesn't work. All right, go back to square one, try another avenue, go down, try again. It's, it's not easy. It's not easy, but there is a way. There is always a way. I hated the way I looked because I knew I was the heaviest weight I had ever been in my entire life. In fact, I was 15% heavier than I was when I got bullied in middle school. But now, I have a YouTube channel. I have millions of eyes on me at all times, especially when I show my- I bet you I have you beat in the weight department. My, high, my high, highest, you didn't even tell us your weight, but I guarantee you I was heavier than you. I was 273 at my max. 273 pounds for all you uh, non-Americans who have like a better uh, measuring system. <laughs> that's fucking fatty right there. That's, that's obese right there. But I did it. I fixed it at a younger age, because I stuck to something. I tried a bunch of stuff, but I found, and they all didn't work until I found something that worked better for me, and I stuck to it, and it fucking worked! Who would have known? Ah. I show my face and don't hide behind this cartoon character. And let me tell you, the things people say in that comment section about how you look can feel just like middle school. Stop, stop it. Come on, people are garbage. And especially when they have a screen in front of them where they can remain an anonymous, they're gonna be abs They're gonna be even worse. <laughs> Get like, come on, grow some fucking thickness around your skin. Especially if this is the way that you're gonna be making money, because you're making really good fucking money off this shit. You get to live a life of full autonomy. You're in a better place than most people in life, and you can work anywhere at any time you want. You can set the, the procedures of your own work. That's that's better off than a lot of people. This is an inevitable aspect to what comes along with this part, with this, this, this life that you've chosen. So find a way to deal with it. You want to know how I deal with shitty comments? I keep them. If they're negative and they're making a point, I leave them and I respond to them. If they're neg negative, toxic, bullshit comments of delusion where it's like clearly they didn't watch the video and they're just making up stuff because they're just stupid, shitty people, fucking block them, ban them, shadow ban them. Make it so that they can't share their opinion. It's like, you are given a chance to share your opinion and you're proving that you are a fucking dumb, stupid piece of shit. Not you, Illy. I'm talking about people who are negatively roasting you. And if it's unwarranted and unjustified, it doesn't make any sense. Fuck them. Their opinion's invalid. They've proven that they don't have the, the mental capacity to, to, like, do this properly. So fuck them. Screw them. Have sex with them. Like middle school. So... What did I do as a young woman who wasn't confident in her body? I started dieting. I found a gym, I found a personal trainer, and I got to work. And after a month of work- That's not dieting. That's working out. Dieting is like 85% of your weight loss. If you stick to a good diet and you don't work out, that would be more effective than if you worked out like every single day. Working out is like the padding to the diet. Remember, more calories out than in. And that's what determines how much weight you lose. I went on like walks when I was on keto. The walks helped, they accelerated the weight loss, but the thing that accelerated the weight, the weight loss itself was the keto. <laughs> ah, okay. Month of working out for three days a week, 45 minutes at a time, doing cardio, abs, arms, legs. List all of it, it won't make a difference. Your diet, what you eat is the most important part. You don't seem to understand that if this is the thing that you're emphasizing. Okay, 
Come on, Illy. Get, get, come on. As well as going to cycling and or yoga class once a week for an hour, I lost zero pounds? How? Because the fucking workout's not putting... <laughs> it's the food you eat. That's what makes you lose weight. God damn it. Is this why you failed? Because you don't understand how it works? Oh my God. I didn't know what it works, but I don't know how I learned how it worked. Google, research, watching videos, trial and error. That's how I learned. You gotta learn this shit before you commit to it. Build a plan, build a regimen, and then follow through. If it doesn't work, go back to square one, research, educate yourself. That is your best weapon. I was doing everything right. Cal no, you weren't. Calories in, calories out, more greens, less takeout, gym membership, personal trainer. You're just rattling off generic things. Can you list a specific diet that you did? I can list them. I tried paleo, right? Only like fucking meats and shit. Only specific types of food didn't work. I tried Weight Watchers, right? Measuring the calories didn't work. I tried fucking, damn, what else did I try? There's a few other types of diets that I'm not into, like a vegan diet, vegetarian diet, didn't work. Then I found keto, stuck to it. That worked. You have to find what works for you. You, I am, it is obvious that you did not figure it out. You didn't like spend enough time researching. You're just going off of shit that other people told you and that's not gonna work, that never works. This made no sense. Unless, maybe I just wasn't working hard enough. That may or may not be true. You are clearly working hard if you're sticking to like a workout plan like that. But it's just, again, it's not how hard you work. It's how you work, and it's how hard you work in these particular ways. You could be working, and you, like most people who make like not like shit money, who work a labor job, are working harder than the people that employ them. It's just they haven't, they're not working in ways that net them the most benefit to their life in regards to this thing that humans have defined as in monetary acquisition. It's about making money. It's not about how hard you work. It's just find a way to make money. That's it. Same thing when it comes to dieting. It's not how hard you diet. It's not how specifically you stick to this thing. It's about whether or not you can quantify this thing properly and approach it in the right way, right? There's a bunch of sayings. I don't have any off the top of my head, right? Measure a bunch, cut once or whatever. Sharpen your ax, then cut or whatever the fuck. I don't know. There's probably some, I could put up some quotes, but hopefully you understand what I'm saying. Maybe I wasn't serious enough. Maybe I just wasn't good enough and I was too far gone to be fixed. Stop it with the, with the anxious self, like, like sadness, mopey, stop it, come on. There's a time and place for that. You must, you must vent, it's good. Like you need an outlet to be able to quantify these things. But like, if all you can do is like complain, the, the complaining itself serves no purpose, right? So complaining is good, don't get me wrong. That, that's valuable, but just don't wallow. Try to like, get, get through the wallowing and then try to learn from the wallowing and then take action. And then you could like feel a little bit better about these things as you're doing them. But my personal trainer assured me that I was doing great. I might not have seen the scale move or felt like my clothes fit better, but from her perspective, she noticed an improvement in my posture. She saw my energy and endurance had increased too. Even the way I talked about life, I was noticeably less stressed. And although I did agree with her, my back wasn't hurting as much. I was getting better. Yeah, but come on, you're, you're, she has to be a little bit more critical than that. Not critical, more objective. Like, hey, you know, you're doing all the working out shit, right? How's the eating shit going? Jesus. I was people. getting better sleep and my mood did recover faster when she did hit the fan. I told her, thank you for the reassurance, but I still didn't like how I looked and I was scared I never would. But she assured me I just needed to keep at it and have faith in myself. And besides, it You need to fire her. <laughs> She's telling you these things that you want to hear. You need to get rid of her. That's like a therapist who's like patting your, your like delusions to the to a patient of theirs. Get rid of her. Find a new one that's gonna be like, hey, you're doing the workout shit correctly. Let me let's talk about your diet now. What are you eating? How much are you eating? What's your specific uh, regimen of, of foods that uh, your intake that, that you have? Let's figure that out. Let's figure out a plan. Let's approach this. Yeah. It had only been a month. Surely soon I'd know. 
two months of diet and exercise, no change on the scale. And I had worked my way up to jogging a mile easily. Diet and exercise, but you're only talking about the exercise. What'd you do for a diet? Say specifically that what you did, and that would give you probably give us a better, a clear picture of why you're not seeing any progress. What was it that you eat? How much did you eat? Like, did you try various methods of dieting? Or like the stuff that I listed before? Are you gonna go over that? Easily on the treadmill, doing crunches and sit-ups for a minute straight. I was even starting to match my personal trainer's strength, and we worked. So no, if you're listing off all this stuff as if like it's enough evidence to, because people do this when like, they're trying to make their point get across. They list a bunch of uh, examples of this thing that they did to show how hard, how much they tried, but it's like, again, you're only focusing on the workout. You said diet and workout, and now you're going over what you did as a workout. What was your diet? Ugh. You showed images of your plate when you were in middle school of the foods that you ate, probably just as a visual rep representation of what you were trying, but like, you're not specific enough, dude. I think that's where the problem is. Doubt side by side. And she told me to keep at it. Don't look at the scale. Just focus on how working out makes you feel, not how it makes you look. So I did, until... Yeah, Illy, you don't have a good personal trainer. Sorry, dude. You gotta get another one. You need people who are a little bit more objective than that. Out of nowhere, I started getting fainting spells. Five reps in, my head would get light, and the room would start spinning. My muscles would fail on me, my eyes would unfocus, and the dizziness would take over even when I was just walking on the treadmill as a warm-up. We thought it could be something with my heart, like maybe I had an irregular heartbeat? I mean, my mom does have an arrhythmia, so maybe I did too? So I saw a cardiologist and I got hooked up with- Is that what you look like? You look fine. A little, little, little chubby, a little pudgy, sure. But like, motherfucker, I, I, I had you beat in that, that area. I was fucking obese, man. Rolls upon rolls, I look like a fucking dough boy. Yeah, you're, you're not even that far gone, dude. If this is the extent of your, your fatness, which sure, chubby, sure, overweight, but like that's, you, your path ahead of you, if you choose the right path, is not that long. This is not really not that fat. And you, you're an American, you know what fucking fat looks like. You're not obese. You still have your shape. What's, what's the problem here? <laughs> Oh man, if you figure out the right thing to do, you don't even have to like, it. Won't, it's not gonna be that long of a path. I guarantee you, you are not that fat, dude. You look fine. All these wires to track my heart over a 24 hour period. But when the results came back, the doctor said I was perfectly healthy. In fact, my heart was doing amazing. But he understood I came here for answers and these tests sadly couldn't explain my sudden setbacks at the gym. So my personal trainer and I scaled back the intensity of the workouts and we did exercises that didn't require too much up and down. But then three months of diet and exercise and still no change on the scale. It was so frustrating. My per I only hear exercise, that's it. You're not going into any detail on what you're eating. You're leaving shit out. I think that's it. The stuff you're leaving out is going to be your answer there. Personal trainer asked if I was eating enough and drinking enough water, and I promised her I was. I left those unhealthy, restrictive eating habits in middle school. I was even consulting a dietitian and following a very strict and honestly triggering meal plan, but I was still not losing any weight. So then, the, okay, there you go. A little bit more context. So clearly those meal plans don't work. Try something else. Have you tried keto? I always recommend because that worked for me. And what's great about that is I could eat as much as I fucking wanted. My body itself would regulate how hungry I was. Granted, I'd be eating the same shit over and over again, but it worked. And I, I didn't work out nearly as, as hard as you did. I just went for walks. That's it. I lost 100 pounds in less than a year. What's your excuse? I was fatter than you. And I lost all that weight. You were working out harder than me. But the diet itself is the thing that determines it. So, eh. All right, hopefully it doesn't, this is a long video. Not, not that long, but my video is gonna be longer. So let's just, let's keep going. So then hopefully we thought, this doesn't fucking okay, break. maybe it's my hormones? My uterus does have a history of growing life-threatening tumors for fun. So maybe something like that was happening again. So I saw an OBGYN, I got a ton of blood tests done and they did an ultrasound of my thyroid, which is a butterfly shaped gland everyone has in their neck that regulates your hormones. And we were all expecting the results to point towards some imbalance or insulin resistance that could 
explain why my body was like this, but it all came back perfectly normal. Perfect. You want to know what's crazy about my situation? I my fam my family's got a history of thyroid problems too. Yet I was fatter than you. Way fatter. You're not like obese like I was. You're just chubby. And I worked out less than you, but I still lost all that weight. Explain that. You're you're there's something you're not you're doing that's not correct. You just got to figure out what it is and then remedy it and then you're golden. Perfectly healthy. So, we continued the workouts and I just had to hope for the best. But 4 months into diet and exercise, there was still no change on the scale, and it made me feel like such a failure. Come on, Illy. You need to be patient. Losing weight is a lifestyle change. You have to be serious and committed to it if you really want to lose weight. And you probably weren't losing weight because you weren't doing enough high-intensity interval training. Uh, no. No. It's because what you're eating was not allowing you to lose weight. That's, that's the thing. Your meal plan didn't work. Try something else. Your workouts were fine. You were doing it. But that's not, you're putting way too much emphasis on the workout. Again, this is the figure I pulled out my ass. 85% of the weight loss is diet. You might be able to find something like that somewhere. I don't know if I put something up here, but yes. Just, yeah, these, these demon guys, they're not, they're not, I get, I get what purpose they serve in context to your, your storytelling, but, and they're not entirely wrong. You gotta commit, but in the right ways. Uh, no, she needs to be doing strength training if she wants to lose weight. No, she needs to eat more protein to lose weight. Actually, someone with her BMI should probably lose weight by- No, no, no. You guys are missing the point. I'm sure there's some other workout routine I could do to lose weight. I know if I cut out- some Nope. Diet routine. Some major food groups and restricted myself to a specific number of something every meal, I could lose weight. No, you don't even have to do that. You just gotta figure out, like, what specific diet plan would work for you. And focus, put as much effort as you're putting into the workouts on your dieting. Like, you cut out some of the working out. You don't have to work out that hard. Like you're, you're, you're pushing yourself a little bit too hard in the wrong ways. It's kind of like what I've been doing in my career. I spent all this time improving myself as an artist. I should not have been doing that. Writing hours every single day. It made no difference. It's going to be good in the long run because I have that skill. But it's useless in the short term. And if I can't get the short term down, the long term is going to be like meaningless. I have to find a way to make money right now. Otherwise, all that stuff later on is not going to matter. It's exactly the same with this. You're putting the right effort just into the wrong stuff. Lose weight. And I don't doubt the fact that there could be a million and one tests and medical possibilities to explain why my body and so many others have such a difficult time losing weight. Maybe there's some- I don't know. I think that's just a cop out. These things can work universally. They do work for everyone. You just have to figure out what works. There's some diagnosis we overlooked. Maybe there's a different way I should be doing this. Or maybe, just maybe, this was proof that all the workouts I was doing was enough. Maybe this was proof that all my body really needed was a little more stretching, a little more strength, and a nice walk every now and then to make me feel better. And No. I mean, yes, in context to you feeling better and your phys physicality. But if the goal is weight loss, you're just wrong priorities. That's it. You just got to figure out what that is, which try different dieting plans. Try going vegan, try keto, try Weight Watchers. Like you've been experimenting, spending all your time experimenting on the workouts, not enough on the, on the dieting. I keep repeating myself. Maybe as weird as it may sound, maybe this was proof that my body and other people's bodies don't need to be less fat to be considered healthy, which I Yeah, kind of. Because just because you're a little bit overweight, especially in her con case, it's, she isn't like obese. Because there is an extent in which that shit really, really affects your long-term health. But being a little chubby, 
that's not gonna like severely act as a detriment to your life. But like, it's still good to try to get yourself down to a specific place, not just for the sake of your, your long-term health, but just like discipline wise, which you clearly have that, but it seems like you're pushing extra just to meet this particular criteria instead of like implementing it into your life into a healthy and sustainable fashion. Like nowadays, I, I, I'm going to, you know, once I get to a point where I have more time and money, I'm going to go to a gym. But I just do in-home exercises, very basic core workouts, very basic stretching as a part of my, my morning routine. And I still somewhat eat. I don't even, I'm not, I don't do keto anymore. I can still eat whatever I want, whenever I want. It's just the whenever I still moderate that. I still try to have like my intake in a healthy fashion. I don't go overboard and I still weigh myself every single day. And if I notice that I'm going past a certain threshold, so right now, I weighed myself this morning, I'm literally 157 right now. If I go past 160, I peel it back. All right, less sugar, less chocolate, less, less like carb heavy food, less fried shit. And I do that for a small margin of time until I get myself to a point, you know, the low end of 150. And then I'm like, okay, I can splurge a little bit, but I control that splurge. It's still always on my mind now. But getting down to that point, that required me to figure out specifically what it is that work, that I can do that works. It's, it was, and it wasn't the workouts. That, that, that's a small fraction of it. Which I know sounds crazy. We've been told our entire lives that you can't be healthy if you're fat. Yet, here I am. You'll be healthier if you're skinny. And granted, just because you're skinny doesn't mean that you're healthier always. It depends on what you're eating, depends on your nutrients, and all sorts of things, right? It goes both ways. But sure, you're not entirely wrong from my clearly informed opinion as a nutritionist. <laughs> yeah, I could be wrong about these things, so. But even if I were wrong about it and people were to shit on me for it, I'm not gonna fucking like cry and whine and try to like retaliate. If someone says something stupid, I'll just <laughs> silence them. If they're making a valid point, I'll respond to it, so. Um, at the heaviest I've ever been in my entire life, categorically overweight and well within middle school mocking range, but also the healthiest I've ever been, according to multiple doctors. Now, coming to this conclusion wasn't easy for me. I had a lot of unrealistic and frankly problematic ideas about health to unpack and reprioritize in my brain. But it was around this time I revisited a podcast I hadn't listened to in a while. The show is called Maintenance Phase, and it's hosted by Aubrey Gordon and Michael Hobbs. Each episode, they go over diet trends and fads, the history, the myths, the biases, and they offer their personal insight and humor on how to be kinder to yourself in the wake of diet culture. This isn't sponsored, I just love this podcast. I've been a Patreon supporter for a long time now, and I say this because they have really helped me reconsider what it means to be healthy, and I can't thank them enough for it. One thing I learned from them that has stuck with me is the idea of body neutrality. Body neutrality is the idea of taking a neutral stance on how we look. Not bullying ourselves for what we think we should change, but also not worshiping the parts of ourselves that do align with diet culture. This way of thinking challenges us to look in the diet mirror and- culture, there you keep using that buzzword again. When I just like, through a reasonable lens, try to like, look at yourself and be like, okay, I'm satisfied with that. Me, what do I feel? Now, granted, what you feel could just be, someone could be in a, uh, a tub of lard and look in the mirror and kind of like delude themselves and be like, okay, I'm okay with this. So you have to, I guess, be rational comes to this, which is kind of hard advice to be given other people because everyone has their own definition of what that is, right? Diet culture, you keep using that term. And I understand what you mean, but understand it goes both ways, man. There's a lot of, mindless prejudice and stigma when it comes to diet culture, and there's a lot of delusion and nonsense when it comes to fat acceptance. You gotta find a healthy balance. You, you have to be realistic and intelligent about this stuff, but that's kind of asking too much for your average person. Mirror and say, yep, that's my body. And finally celebrate its existence for what it can do, not for how it looks. And when it comes to food, that same logic should apply. A carrot isn't an inherent good food, while chocolate is an inherent bad food. Food is just food, no matter how- What? Carrots are objectively healthier for you than fucking sugar and chocolate. 
Don't tell your, that's what I meant. Don't be deluded like that. Like do research. Is this food better than this other thing? Based on research and science and medicine. What? Now, unless you're saying that like you can have these things and if you're intelligent about it, you can have anything. It's like, yeah, dude, I can eat whatever the fuck I want right now. And I do. If I go out and have a bunch of fried food, if I'm taking into account my weight, I'm on the low end, I can go out and splurge and not feel bad about it. And I won't have to deal with severe ramifications. But if I'm constantly going out and eating that type of stuff and I notice that it has an effect on my weight gain, then it's like, all right, cool it. But that's the thing, if uh, comparing carrots to chocolate, you have a bunch more carrots, have, uh, you're not gonna have that as the result. You have a bunch more chocolate, you are probably gonna have that as the result, the negative ramifications. Because chocolate is unhealthy. It's unhealthier than carrots. If we're just using those two things as an example. This, this take sucks. You don't know what you're talking about when it comes to this. <laughs> Not all food is just food. There are foods that are better or worse for you. That's why you get people who look various ways, right? Like if you were to eat homemade hamburgers versus McDonald's, those would probably be healthier for you. Because the stuff that's inside those, you know, McDonald's hamburgers versus regular hamburgers, you have more control over this. You can have healthier ingredients in the homemade stuff. But that's the thing, it takes more effort instead of just going out sitting through a fucking drive through right, ordering some garbage food, which I do that all the time. I had Burger King last night. That garbage, it's, bur it's fucking garbage, <laughs> but I like it. But I know how to moderate it and, and approach it in a healthy fashion where it doesn't affect me because I know how to moderate that stuff. I figured it out, what works for me. No matter how many calories, carbs, sugars, whatever is in it, unless you have life-threatening allergies or dietary restrictions to follow, you should feel free to eat whatever food you want to without beating yourself up about it. Oh. You should be, yeah, and you are free if you know how to moderate it, but if it gets out of hand and you don't know how to control it, it is a problem. Don't ignore that. Don't make excuses for that. That's how you get obesity. That's how you get like cardiovascular disease, <laughs> especially in a garbage country like America, which everything is filled with poison because of corruption, which makes it even harder to moderate this type of stuff. Makes sense why there's so many fucking obese people, which makes stuff like this more difficult to, to tackle, so. Oh great, now she's glorifying obesity. I'm not glorifying anything. My point is simple. Don't be a d to fat people. And don't use, oh, I just care about their health, as an excuse. Being fat doesn't automatically mean someone is less healthy or too lazy to look like you or however you think they should look. You don't- This logic applies universally. Put anyone in any demographic. Oh, this poor person's poor because they're lazy and dumb. It's like, these are average stigmas people have against each other. You just gotta learn to deal with other people's mindless nonsense. You have to learn to not let it get to you. Because people are stupid. They're mindless animals. They make up shit because of their emotions. The same way people do it on the very on the flip side of that, on the over acceptance of a lot of bad stuff. And a lot of people, at least the people criticizing this video from what I gather, have a problem with the, uh, you know, shifting the scale too far in the other way. Because it's like, it's another form of delusion. The people who think that you're lazy and dumb for being fat are no different than the people who think that it's totally okay to be just, to just not care about your health and your weight. It's the same thing. Find a way to moderate this stuff and not be a delusional idiot. Moral of the story. You don't know these people, but what if they're not healthy? At, even if you've stalked this person to somehow come to that conclusion, you're still not allowed to be a to them. Ugh. Not allowed. It's not a good thing, but you can do whatever the fuck you want. Uh, that's the thing about an indifferent reality. Anything goes. People can do or say whatever they want. So you ha so in retaliation to that, it is incumbent upon you to learn how to react accordingly to that. Not let it get to you. Not be so insecure about the things that other people say. Value, value the opinion of yourself and the opinions of like reason and intellect and, and research over just mindless, the, all the noise. That's always going to be there. Okay? So, yeah. Okay. Or stalk people. Bad devil's advocate. Now, maybe this all sounds stupid to you. Maybe you don't need body neutrality to mend your relationship with food or weight. But I do. 
Because frankly, I'm sick of crying in dressing rooms. I'm sick of getting mad at myself for eating a french fry. I'm sick of seeing other girls and wishing I looked like them. I'm sick of hating my body and feeling like a prisoner in my own skin because that, that is what's truly unhealthy. No matter how skinny or fat you are, holding yourself to the expectations of diet culture is not healthy or sustainable. And I don't- Dude, these are all just insecurities. These are all things that, that you're succumbing to as a result of other people placing their values onto you. Like, all that stuff's always going to be there. There's always going to be pervasive forces in the world. You have to react to them properly. Otherwise, you will succumb. Like, all the stuff that you're complaining about is shit that other people are trying to put onto you. That you've sort of, in many ways, allowed to. Now, as a child, that makes sense. But you're an adult. Like, now you've had all these years to try to, like, learn how to deal with this stuff. So... I can't really say definitively. I mean, you're, again, you're not like a seriously, you're not like at a really bad weight. Take care of yourself. That's the bottom line. And don't delude yourself and don't reinforce delusion in the world. I mean, you can do whatever you want. That's the great thing about different reality. It doesn't matter if you're good or bad, you're wrong or right. You just do whatever you like. But if we're talking about through an ethical lens, what should and shouldn't be, that. Be reasonable, be intelligent. Sustainable. And I don't know about you, but I can't keep living like this. I don't want to be afraid or angry or sad about how my body looks. Mirrors were made to just show us our reflection, not to be a weapon of self-destruction. So when I look in the mirror and I start to pick on myself the same way those middle school girls did, I try to remind myself of what really matters. That my legs can sit me down next to the people I love. My arms can hold them and hug them. It's really disabled phobic of you. Jesus. What's wrong with people who don't have working legs? Would, are you implying that if your legs didn't work that you wouldn't be able to have that, have, like be okay with it? Get out of here, Illy. Goddamn, like prejudiced enabler, that's what you are. My face can squish exactly how it needs to so I can smile. And my body can be draped in any clothing and my silhouette can be any shape or size. And I must throw away- No. If your silhouette is too large or too skinny, it's a problem. Like, I get the self-acceptance. Uh, disband the radical self-acceptance. Be realistic. Be intelligent about this stuff. Don't just pad your emotions just because of what you've been through and what other people have done to you or try expected of you. Way, what all the mean girls and the media made me believe about myself based solely on how much I weigh. Because us fat kids, we knew back then there was so much more to a person than how they looked. We knew that before anyone else did. So why should we- All right, get out of here. Stop it. Me and my fat people, this is what we do. All righty, um, nothing too crazy. That, that wasn't like too ridiculous. It's just, you know, a lot of emotional padding here and there, but nothing really too far outside the box. Um, thesis of the story. Be a rational, emotionally intelligent person and like take care of yourself. Don't succumb to the things, the, the mindless prejudices and stigmas that other people have. Be reasonable. Yeah, I did. I don't know. All right.